The right to confront and examine witnesses. Yes, ma'am. The right to summon and subpoena witnesses on your behalf. Yes, ma'am. The right to have the state prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes, ma'am. The right not to testify at trial and no one can use that against you. Yes, ma'am. Do you also understand the court can proceed to judgment and sentence you today? Yes, ma'am. Based upon the statement of the prosecuting attorney and yours, it's my understanding you plead guilty as follows. Count one, a felony of the first degree, punishable by three to 11 years in prison, up to a $20,000 fine, and five years of mandatory post release control. Count two, a felony of the second degree, punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, five years of post release control, which is also mandatory. Count three, felony of the second degree, punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, and discretionary post release control of up to three years. Count five, a felony of the fifth degree, punishable by six to 12 months in prison, up to a $2,500 fine, three years of discretionary post release control. Do you also understand if you enter the pleas of guilty that in addition to imposing a term of incarceration, the court can require you to pay the fines, cost of confinement or supervision, and the cost of the action? Yes, ma'am. If prison terms are imposed, you'll be subject to post release control as I've just described to you. Five years mandatory on counts one and two, and discretionary on counts three, four, I'm sorry, three and five. I'm sorry, I think I read count four to her, which is not a plea. I'm sorry. She's going to go to counts one, two, three, and five, correct? Correct. Okay. If you violate the conditions of post-release control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of any term this court imposes. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Community control is the term for what was formerly known as probation. You could receive community control for up to five years, but if you violate that sentence, you could then receive a more restrictive sentence, including prison. Do you also understand that? Yes, ma'am. Also, the parties have entered into what is called a recommendation to the court. You have signed off on this, as has your counsel and the prosecutor. However, this is not a promise of the sentence, and it is not binding upon the court. The court retains full discretion to sentence you, either lower than the range or higher than the range. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Have any threats or promises been made to you? No, ma'am. Do you understand there's no promise of a particular sentence? Yes, ma'am. Let the record reflect the court is satisfied the defendant has been informed of her constitutional rights, understands the nature of the charges against her, the effect of the plea, and the possible maximum penalties which may be imposed. Your pleas are found to be made knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily. Your plea to count one, a felony of the first degree with the penalties as read to you. What is your plea now? Guilty. Your plea to count two, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. Your plea to count three, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. And your plea to count five, a felony of the fifth degree with the penalties read to you. Your plea. Guilty. The remaining count is dismissed at the request of the state. It's my understanding this plea is continued upon the plea of the defendant. Is that correct? That is true, Your Honor. If for some reason your co defendant does not enter his plea, this proceeding will be vacated and will proceed to trial. It's our understanding you will be entering a plea, but I do want to tell you that when that, that changes, you will be notified and will proceed to trial. We're going to proceed to sentencing. Anything from the state? Yes, Your Honor. Um, here on behalf of Jordan, Your Honor, we got a photograph of Jordan Rodriguez. He was five years old at the time of his death. And his family members are here. His aunt, his uncle, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cruz are here, as well as a family friend, Maria Cruz. They have prepared a statement. On behalf of Jordan's extended family, we want the court to know that we not only loved him, but we attempted to intervene on his behalf of all the children. Those attempts were rebuffed by both Larissa and Christopher. We specifically recall one opportunity that we had to keep Jordan overnight in our home. Jordan, although nonverbal, was able to communicate with us and shared a special family meal seated on his uncle Jose's lap. Our point in sharing this story Judge is to illustrate that Jordan thrived with love and affection. He was delayed in his cognitive development, but he clearly showed his love by running to his Uncle Jose when he came home from work. Jordan was a special, sweet little boy 
who would have developed and bloomed into a special soul. It is our deepest sadness to have this sweet boy's life extinguished and buried in an unmarked grave. As a family, we love Larissa because she too is our family. However, we can never reconcile ourselves with her deeds. We hope that you take our thoughts into consideration when you hold Jordan's parent accountable today, the Rodriguez and Cruz families. Your Honor, on behalf of the state of Ohio, Jordan Rodriguez was born on November 5th, 2012. He was born 26 weeks premature and had a whole host of medical issues. He was born with one functioning kidneys and other heart and breathing issues. He was enrolled at Cleveland Metropolitan School District where they actually tried to help with an IEP and help with his developmental delays because he was, of course, nonverbal. Jordan was withdrawn by his mother on September 13, 2016, and told officials at the school that he was moving out of state. Jordan's last medical care ceased on or about November of 2015. Per Larissa, when she was questioned about her child, she said he was out of town, and she repeatedly said that. Then finally, when she was confronted with the fact that that child may have been buried in her backyard, she told Detective Remington, this is what happened on September 21st. While getting the kids ready for school, Christopher brought Jordan in to the bathroom where he was in a semi-conscious state. She tried to revive him with a cold shower and then she laid him in bed for 24 hours and she makes it a point to tell Detective Remington that she laid him in bed, in her bed, because she wanted to be close to him. She woke up the next morning of September 22nd and he was dead. Larissa and the co-defendant Christopher decide to dig a hole which is four foot by four foot. They wrap him in numerous blankets, garbage bags, duffel bag, and bury him in the backyard. And you will find, Judge, I have provided to this court um, under seal, State's Exhibit A1, A, 1A to 1H, which are several photographs of the time and energy that it took to bury this child. And the very last photograph is a picture of Jordan. When he came out of the bag, he had a diaper on it, he had a pajama top, and some shorts. And the reason for showing you these photographs, Judge, is to show you the time and the energy that it took to bury this child versus dialing 911 for help. And the state is also going to give you state's exhibit number two, which is an autopsy. So as she continues to talk to, Dr. to Detective Remington, she claims that this little, that she herself has suffered abuse at the hands of Christopher Rodriguez, and that that abuse transferred to her kids. But she would never go any further than that to articulate anything else. So if it, if it wasn't for Scott Rodriguez calling the police on December 19, 2017 from Pakistan and telling Cleveland Police Department that a child was buried in the backyard of her home, this child may still have been there, Your Honor. So I'm going to hand you the State's Exhibit 1 a through H and 2, and I'm also going to make note of the fact that you will find in the autopsy that there were healing fractures and acute fractures. The healing fractures, Your Honor, were of the ribs. 
And specifically, they were, there was a wrist fracture, and then there were healing ribs, 6, 8, 10 on the right side, and 8 on the left side. Those are most consistent with child abuse according to our medical examiner. And the recent fracture, the right 6, 9, and 10, they're indicative of child abuse, but they're not definitive. Your Honor, this is a very tragic case, as all cases are when it involves children. But the definition of a mother is the meaning, the meaning of being a mother is virtually endless. A mother is a protector, a disciplinarian, and a friend. A mother is selfless and loving human who must sacrifice many of her wants and needs for the wants and needs of their children. From the day Jordan was born, I'm sure that child may have tested her patience. No matter what a child does or says, being a mother means that you love your child unconditionally. When a woman becomes pregnant, her responsibility is to provide a safe and secure environment while her baby grows. The responsibility continues when she becomes a mother. Whether it's ensuring her child has a roof over its head, to keeping monsters away at night, and everything in between. Larissa Rodriguez failed miserably, Your Honor, as Jordan's mother, as his caretaker, as his protector, and even in death, by not ascending for help, not asking for help, not providing help. But she obviously took the time to have him wrapped over and over again. And you will see in one of those photographs, there are mothballs in that bag. And those mothballs, Your Honor, are to keep away rodents and animals. There's a sad commentary of this child's end. Though his beginning was hard, his end didn't have to be so hard. So we ask that you impose what this court deems appropriate in the recommendation of the Thank you. I have a question about the autopsy. It says that the child was five years old and he was 15 pounds at the time of the autopsy. Yes, Your Honor. We cannot speak to the issue of malnutrition because of the decomposition was so grave. And speaking with Dr. Gilson said that they actually had taken some of the bones to have them further analyzed at the hospital, but they were not able to say anything determinative because malnutrition, depending on kids, it can go up and go down depending depending on feeding patterns. So we can What about the lack of subcutaneous fat? I'm sorry? The lack of subcutaneous fat. He said the same thing. I mean, we can hypothecate something, but we cannot be definitive within a reasonable degree of medical certainty. Okay. Fair. Thank you. Anything else from the state? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, who will be speaking for the defense? I will. Your Honor, uh, may it please the court. Uh, obviously, Ms. Rodriguez has accepted responsibility, not only for this, but the matter for which she is presently under sentence. We cannot undo the tragedy, in fact, the horror that this case represents and what she's done. I only suggest to the court, in deference to my opponents, uh, that you effectuate the recommended agreed sentence that we provided to the court. And quite frankly, I would say that a 20 year term of prison, it doesn't demean anything. It's 20 years in prison, Judge. The defendant presents with no prior criminal history of any sort. And I'd ask you to take that into account. Thank you. Would you like to speak? You don't have to be on question. Thank you. I'm not quite sure I understand why you think a lack of criminal history is even relevant here. I only ask the court to consider. Have you seen the pictures I just saw? I've seen all the pictures and more, Your Honor. This is a very well thought out burial. Your Honor, again, 
we, anytime a negotiated settlement is, is reached, it's our acknowledgement that facts sufficient to establish proof beyond a reasonable doubt of the elements of the crime to which we enter pleas exist. We do not adopt one version or another of what exactly the choreography of any person's role. I would suggest to you, Your Honor. What does that mean? You don't adopt the theory? Well, the because I will say that I believe that the other defendant is largely responsible for everything that happened after that child expired. That's all, Judge. But you can't deny that your client had knowledge. We can't deny her complicity. And you can't deny that your client didn't call, first of all, the doctor when he was sick and the police later when her husband buried him. Yes, Your Honor. Those are the factual bases of her pleas. Well, I don't think it's relevant that she has no prior criminal record given these offenses. These offenses are horrible offenses. Agreed. And yes, do I, a prior criminal record might warrant an even longer sentence, but a 20 year sentence to me is not appropriate. It's I understand, Your Honor. The court imposes sentence as follows Count one, involuntary manslaughter, felony of first degree, 11 years in prison. Count two, felony of the second degree, felonious assault, eight years in prison. Count three, felony of the third degree, I'm sorry, felony of the second degree, six years in prison, count five, abuse of a corpse, felony of the fifth degree, nine months in prison. Counts one, two, and three to be served consecutive to each other and concurrent to the sentence imposed in count five for a total sentence of 25 years. The sentence is to be served concurrent to the sentence previously imposed in 625-508 for a total sentence of 25 years. She's subject to mandatory post-release control on count one for five years, mandatory five years on count two, discretionary count three and five for up to three years. If she violates conditions of post-release control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of any prison term this court imposed. Fines, fees, and costs are waived if she's in need of remand. And the court finds that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime and to punish the offender. They are not disproportionate to the seriousness of the offender's conduct and to the danger she poses to the public. The court also finds at least two of the multiple offenses were committed as part of one or more courses of conduct and the harm caused by two or more of the multiple offenses so committed was so great or unusual that no single prison term would adequately reflect the seriousness of her conduct. Any questions from the state? None, Your Honor. Thank you. Any questions from the defense? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Remand for transfer. Thank you.
$20,000 at this court's discretion. It is my further understanding this defendant will be pleading guilty to count two as a felonious assault in violation of Ohio Revised Code 2903.11A1. It is a felony of the second degree, carrying with a potential penalty of two to eight years to be served in one year increments and a fine of up to $15,000 at this court's discretion. In addition, he will be pleading guilty to an amended count three to reflect a date change from January 1st, 2017 to September 21st, 2017 to September 22nd, 2017. That is endangering children in violation of Ohio Revised Code 2919.22B1. It too is a felony of the second degree, carrying a potential penalty of two to eight years and a fine of up to $15,000 at this court's discretion. In addition, he will be pleading guilty to count five gross abuse of the courts, a felony of the fifth degree, carrying with it a potential penalty of six to 12 months and a fine of up to $2,500 at this court's discretion. In addition, Your Honor, the parties further agree that all counts do not merge and are not allied offenses of similar import. The parties further agree to an agreed recommended sentence of 20 to 25 years at the discretion of this court. And this too, Your Honor, was a package deal with regards to his co-defendant, Larissa Rodriguez. Other than what has been spread on the record, there have been no promises, no threats, and no inducements made to this defendant to withdraw his not guilty plea and enter a plea of guilt as outlined. There is a factual basis for the same, Your Honor. And if in fact a plea is forthcoming, we're going to respectfully request that you not only count for of this indictment. Thank you. I'm sorry. Counsel, is this your understanding of the pleas? It is, Your Honor. Mr. Rodriguez, do you understand everything you've said today? Yes, ma'am. Can you keep your voice up for me? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Have any threats or promises been made to you? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with your attorney's representation? Yes, Your Honor. Are you on parole, probation, or any community control sanction? No, Your Honor. Are you a citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Can you tell me your full name and age? Christopher Michael Rodriguez, 36 years old. How far did you go to school? 11th grade. Can you read and write? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence today of drugs, alcohol, or medicine? Yes, but not to impair my uh, judgment. What medicines? Uh, Zoloft and Boost Park. Okay, and do you understand the proceedings today? Yes, ma'am. All right, any others? No, Your Honor. Okay. Your attorneys have advised you the court needs to be satisfied that you understand your rights. Do you understand if you enter the pleas of guilty or waiving your right to a jury trial? Yes, Your Honor. The right to confront and examine witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. The right to summon and subpoena witnesses on your behalf? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. The right to have the state prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes, Your Honor. The right not to testify at trial and no one can use that against you. Yes, Your Honor. Do you also understand the court could proceed to judgment and sentence you immediately? Yes, Your Honor. Based upon the statement of the prosecuting attorney and yours, it's my understanding you'll plead guilty to count one, a felony of the first degree, punishable by three to 11 years in prison up to a $20,000 fine, five years of mandatory post release control. Count two, a felony of the second degree, Punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, five years of mandatory post-release control. Count three, a felony of the second degree, punishable by two to eight years in prison, up to a $15,000 fine, three years of discretionary post-release control. Count five, a felony of the fifth degree, punishable by six to 12 months in prison, and up to a $2,500 fine, and three years of discretionary post-release control. Do you also understand if you enter the pleas of guilty that in addition to imposing a term of incarceration, the court can require you to pay the fines, costs of confinement or supervision, and the cost of the action? Yes, Your Honor. And if you're sentenced consecutively, you face 28 years in prison and $66,000 in fines. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. If you're sent to prison, you will be subject to post-release control, as I have just explained to you. And if you violate the conditions of post-release control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of any term I might impose. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Community control is a term for what was formerly known as probation, and you could receive community control for up to five years. If you violate that sentence, you could then receive a more restrictive sentence, including prison. Do you also understand that? Yes, Your Honor. There has been a recommendation made to the court. I want to be clear that you understand it is not a promise of sentence, and the court is not bound by the recommendation. It is a suggestion to the court, but it is not binding, and it is not a promise of sentence. Do you understand that? 
Yes, Your Honor. Have any threats or promises been made to you? No. Do you understand there's no promise of a particular sentence? Yes, Your Honor. Let the record reflect the court is satisfied the defendant has been informed of his constitutional rights, understands the nature of the charges against him, the effect of a plea, and the possible maximum penalties which may be imposed. Your pleas are found to be made knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily. Your plea to count one, a felony of the first degree with the penalties as read to you. What is your plea, sir? Guilty. Your plea to count two, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. Your plea to count three, a felony of the second degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. Count five, a felony of the fifth degree with the penalties as read to you. Your plea. Guilty. The remaining count is dismissed at the request of the state. We are proceeding to sentencing this fraud. Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of Jordan, his extended family is here, and they have made a statement. On behalf of Jordan's extended family, we want this court to know that we not only loved him, but we attempted to intervene on his behalf and of all the children. Those attempts were rebuffed, rebuffed by both Larissa and Christopher. We specifically recall one opportunity that we had to keep Jordan overnight in our home. Jordan, although nonverbal, was able to communicate with us and share a special family meal seated in his uncle Jose's lap. Our point in sharing this story is to illustrate that Jordan thrived with love and affection. He was delayed in his cognitive development, but he clearly showed his love by running to his uncle Jose when he came home from work. Jordan was a special, sweet little boy who would have developed and bloomed into a special soul. It is our deepest sadness to have the sweet boy's life extinguished and buried in an unmarked grave. However, we can never reconcile what Mr. Rodriguez has done in this case. We hope that you will take our thoughts and considerations when you hold Jordan's parents accountable today. The Rodriguez inclusive. Anything else? Judge, the purposes and principles of sentencing are to punish the offender and protect the public. The state of Ohio has already handed you state's exhibit under seal A1 through H, which are photographs of this child's burial, and um, state's exhibit number two, which is the autopsy. And again, there are healing fractures and recent fractures on this little boy, a wrist fracture, and the healing fractures of the right side, six, eight, and 10, of the ribs and left eighth rib, which are most consistent with child abuse. And then the recent fractures of the right six, nine, and ten ribs, which are indicative or which are indicative of child abuse, but not definitive. Your Honor, the time that Mr. Rodriguez and Miss Rodriguez took the time to bury his child instead of dialing 911 is abhorrent to me. This child needed aid and assistance, and they both failed miserably. But what they didn't fail at is trying to bury and hide this little boy. Instead of rendering aid, they buried him. And that was to hide what had happened to him. Um, not only did they put a pull-up over his head, they also put mothballs. That takes a lot of time, energy, and effort to think of those things where they could have dialed 911. So I think their actions speak louder than words. And I think Mr. Rodriguez also needs to be punished. And um, we also ask that you consider the agreed recommended sentence of 20 to 25 years against Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. The initial information, including please, came from uh, Mr. Rodriguez, what is the relationship to this gentleman? Uh, it was his brother, Your Honor, who was serving in our military in Pakistan. Apparently, Mr. Rodriguez, prior to going to Medina Court to serve his sentence, called his brother up and told him that this baby died, didn't give any explanation, just said the baby had died, and that they had decided to bury this child in the backyard. The brother immediately said, you need to call the police. Mr. Rodriguez Christopher said that he couldn't talk. He didn't want Larissa to hear him. He could not go against Larissa. So as a result of that, 
he didn't try. And then the brother, once he was able to uh, get a landline, he then called and reported it, thinking that his brother would call the police himself because he was going to Medina um, jail. But apparently he never did that, so the brother couldn't live with himself anymore. He's the one that called the police to find out the run. And there was no explanation that was provided as to what happened to the child, though the brother didn't find Anything from the defense? Your Honor, at this time, we only ask that the court uh, consider uh, his relative lack of significant criminal history, certainly no violent offenses of any kind. I have here that he's an offender in both Texas and Florida with felony battery, robbery, misdemeanor battery, and in Texas, that's in Florida, and drugs. Why would you tell me that's a non-violent? We don't believe those are convictions for those offenses, Your Honor. You don't believe they're convictions? No, we don't. Does the state agree those are not convictions? Not of those charges. We believe lesser offenses. Well, I, what I have before me is felony battery, misdemeanor battery, robbery, and then Texas uh, drug test, possession case. We have the same thing we have your article in this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Judge? Yes. You do have the same records that you have indicating that there were arrests for robberies, felony in the second degree, and battery of felony in the third degree. As well as a conviction for the same battery in 2016. We don't have the disposition of those arrests for felonies. He is also a felon in Medina County for child for uh, criminal non support. Okay, anything else from the defense? No, Your Honor. Mr. Rodriguez, do you want to speak? You don't have to if you don't wish. Respectfully, no, Your Honor. I didn't hear you. <clears throat> Respectfully, no, Your Honor. <clears throat> there is a plea of guilty in Florida in 2016 to battery with counsel present. December 16th. 2016, you that? We got some misdemeanor, yes, Your Honor. First, I want to say that uh, the serviceman who made this phone call, it's so important that he did that, and I don't want him to go unrecognized because I can't imagine the trauma that he had hearing this in a foreign country that his brother had done something like this, asking his brother to take accountability. And then because his brother doesn't want to be a man, he has to do it, but he did it. And I give him credit for doing that. The other thing that this case I think really drives home is that there's insufficient consideration given to the people that work in the criminal justice system. So I want to say to the police, to the detectives, Remington and Diaz. I certainly know that your job is very difficult. And I look at these photographs, and it's very hard. And I think you should be recognized more for the difficulty of what you do. And the same to the state, and to the defense. This is equally difficult for you. What we do every day is so hard. People don't give any of us the credit that we deserve for dealing with the horrors that are brought before us. And Mr. Rodriguez, this is a horror. I know as a judge I'm not supposed to show emotion. And in 22 years, I never have. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. And I don't understand, Mr. Rodriguez, why you don't want to cleanse yourself and tell the truth about what happened here. And I hope someday you do. Whatever this child's life was supposed to be, you make sure it didn't happen. You and Larissa, 
I look at friends and family and people who are desperate to have children and want to have families, and you two have babies with no consideration. You just keep having them, having them, disregarding the value of their life, disregarding their purpose in life, like they're less than an object, no regard. I didn't even hear you say you were sorry. I will not accept the recommendation for Ms. Rodriguez. These crimes are horrific. There's no question in my mind that this child was abused. It's clear that you did everything you could, you and Larissa, to hide evidence to protect yourselves. You had every opportunity at so many points to make a difference to get help, to stop beating somebody, to call the police, to ask for help, to try to take him to the hospital. I have to imagine that at some point you got in the internet and said, how do I bury a body? Because this is unbelievable to me. The level of meticulousness that you went through to not be discovered, I honestly don't know how you did it. I don't know how either one of you lives with yourself. Your sentence is follows. Count one, involuntary manslaughter, 11 years in prison. Count two, felony of second degree, felonious assault, eight years in prison. Count three, felony of second degree, eight years in prison. Count five, abuse of a corpse. One year in prison, all counts to be served consecutive to each other with credit for any time served. That's a total sentence of 28 years. It's the maximum sentence available. You're subject to mandatory post police control on counts one and two and discretionary on counts three and five. If you violate the conditions of post police control, the parole board must impose an additional prison term for up to one half of the term that I've imposed. Fines, fees, and costs are waived as you're indigent to your return. Any questions from the state? Any questions, Adam? Uh, just to Oh, yes. Thank you. The court uh, finds that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime and punish the offender and are not disproportionate to the seriousness of the conduct and the danger that the offender poses to the public. The court further finds that these two of the multiple offenses were committed as part of one or more courses of conduct and the harm caused by two or more of the offenses so committed was so great or unusual that no single prison term would adequately reflect the seriousness of the conduct. Any questions from the state? You have a I. If I did PRC, but I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Five years mandatory on counts one and two, discretionary on three years on three and five, and if you violate the conditions of post police control, the parole board must be an official from the term for up to one half of the term five at most. Any questions? Thank you, Your Honor. No questions, Judge. Okay. Thank you.